everyone, it's me, Krista. Welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, if not, welcome for the very first time to my little art corner here on YouTube. And today we are going to be playing around with all these scratch board supplies that came in the July 2020 Palletful Packs box. To start off, I am going to read the suggestions that came on the little pamphlet that came in this month's box. For getting started, it says start by drawing your subject matter directly on the scratch board surface with pastels, plain white chalk, or a graphite pencil. To begin, scratch out all the lines from your drawing on the scratch board. Next, scratch in directional lines to show volume. Following the directional lines and repeating them to fill in, start sculpting out the shapes. Go over areas several times that need to be the most highlighted. When the drawing is completed, clean off any scratched clay ink debris and chalk dust with a very soft cloth. At first I pulled out a white pastel, it's the Pentelic pastel, and I always forget that for some reason this one does not erase very well, so I switched over to a General Rolls charcoal white pencil. Because that first pencil does not erase very well, I did already have to dip into the black scratch board ink, which is supposed to be kind of a repair color. And at this point on camera, you can definitely tell because even with it dried, it's a little bit shinier than the rest of the scratch board. And at this point, I'm just going in with the different carving tools that came in this month's box. I noticed that I really enjoy the ones that have a more feathered-like shape. I think I was able to get a variety of effects with those. We might want to talk a little bit about what exactly it is that I am drawing. It is a potu bird. They are native to Central and South America, and I've wanted to draw one of these birds for a couple of years now. A few years ago, I injured my back fairly badly, and I was off of work for over a month. During that time, I was on different medications such as muscle relaxers, and I came across images of one of these birds, and it was just the right time for me to become fairly obsessed with them. I love how cute and silly and expressive they look with their mouths closed, but I also enjoy how when their mouths are wide open, because their mouths are huge, that they look like something straight out of a horror film. It's the right mixture of scary and adorable for me to love them. I finally decided to do one for this project specifically because I felt that with this media, it should be something that had fur or feathers so that I could learn and play around with the scratch board materials. I felt feathers or fur with all the texturing would work well with the media. I was surprised that while I was doing this project that using the engraving tools were really similar to doing a pen drawing. The concept of doing the strokes and the application the different usages of pressure, layering, and then using different sizes and shapes for the engraving tools. It just really reminded me of doing a pen drawing, specifically when I play around with a white gel pen on top of marker. I started with some of these smaller tools and then I went up to the larger ones. The ones that I really enjoyed using, like I said earlier, were the more feather shaped ones. I felt that I could get a variety of thicknesses and different line shapes with those and I thought it lent itself really well for the feathers. I used the number four cutter from the Royal and Langnickel engraving tool set in order to add some little patterns on the feathers after I got some lines in as well. These birds seem to have some kind of spotting pattern and I thought that that would help get that across a little bit. I do end up leaving the background entirely black. I don't touch it. I wanted the bird to stand out as much as possible. And I think with all the little lines we have going on that if there was stuff going on in the background as well, it might be too much. It would get a little overwhelming for the eye. After I get a good chunk of the line work and detailing in, I decided that I do want to pull in some of those scratch board clay board inks. So I decided I wanted to color in just his eyes. According to our wonderful little pamphlet we got in the box, to add vibrant color, use the scratchboard clayboard inks that are both waterproof and transparent. For best results, build up the color in diluted washes following the directional lines in the drawing. For final touch-up, apply ampersand black repair ink around the edges of the subject matter to cover any leftover residue and overpainting. You can also use the black repair ink on areas that need to be changed. Once all the color is in, go back and scratch out the highlights. Add more color where needed and repeat this process until you're totally satisfied with the results. 
For the eyes, I use the red, the yellow, and I do pull in some of the black repair ink for those pupils. I also use the black repair ink to darken up and define certain areas with using a smaller brush. I specifically wanted to bring some darkness back into the beak. I did notice that these inks take a long time to dry and I had to use a lot of layers in order to get an effect that I wanted. Also, I noted this in the previous video, which was the unboxing video. The Black Repair ink has a very strong odor to it, so if you're sensitive to smells, you might want to open a window, turn on a fan, or wear a mask. While I wait for the eyes to dry, I do go throughout the rest of our little drawing here and re-pull out highlights in certain areas and just adjust as I go. I also had to step away for a little bit and work on something else while I waited for this to dry. I did not pull in my handy dandy hair dryer for this one to help it dry more quickly because I was worried about that ink flowing into other areas of the drawing that I didn't want it going to. Here I start working on the pupils a little bit. In the reference photo I had, I noticed that the pupils were slightly mismatched in size, so I decided I wanted to exaggerate it even more, make it look a little goofier and a little bit more cartoony. At this point I realized I wanted some areas of the eye to be a more bright yellow, so I start cutting out little lines around the eye and then painting over it with the yellow ink. That worked very well for getting it back to a nice, bright, true yellow. I do also cheat with the pupils. I decided that the black ink wasn't drying as dark as I wanted it to for those pupils. So I pulled in a Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. This one's just a brush pen. Once it dried, it actually blended in fairly well with everything else. I also use that marker in some other spots around the face to create a tiny bit more contrast, and I was able to cut around it a little bit with the engraving tools. I had a lot of fun with this project. I really liked the subject. It was nice playing around with some media that I had never used before, and I felt like I learned a lot with this one. And with that, this project and therefore this video is pretty much finished. If you liked it, please hit that like button. If you have any comments, questions, feelings, concerns, or you've played around with any of the items that came in this month's box, please let me know all about it in that comment section down below. If you want to see more videos like this, please feel free to subscribe. I do powerful packs, unboxings, and projects once a month. As always, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day or night to watch this video and listen to me ramble. I greatly appreciate it. I look forward to hearing from you guys soon, and you will definitely be hearing from me soon. Bye, everybody!